welcome to the Homeboys Live podcast here on Monday the 25th of August, the night before we take on Maribor and uh, hopefully progress into the Champions League group stage where all the big money is and the big teams and the big nights. Um, we're about 15 minutes later, actually about 20 minutes later, that's true. That's 23 minutes. 23 minutes. Well, well three minutes is probably the song, so let's just, I mean, let's not split hers here. Like, I mean, we're about 20 minutes. Oh, there's Jason calling in. We're trying to get him on there. Hello? Still nothing from Jason. Mm-hmm. Jason's been, he's been silenced. It's the uh, gremlin, gremlins in the system. Silence. It's maybe a protest or something, is it? Silent protest. So. Uh, I don't imagine that will last too long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're, we're working on trying to get him to uh, figure out what's wrong with Jason's uh, his make or something, or possibly, uh, I don't know what it could be, Jason. Um, but we'll 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 get started there anyway, and I'm trying to figure that out why Jason's there. Because so somebody must have been messing with your sentence, Jason. Anyway, this, this, this is a riveting open end of the show. Uh, so anyway, we'll get that sorted out in the background. We'll get things going. But here we are. Uh, the night before Maribor um, weekend wasn't too good. Uh, a defeat to Inverness. Uh, we'll go on to that now in a second. Joined by David Harper, who's eleven well. Right, man. If there's any uh, banging noises, I've got a plumber then fixing my boiler there. I can't shut this door because I've got a cable running from internet to my uh, <coughs> television. Where's your uh, Where's your boiler? In the kitchen. What's wrong with it? Uh, PC board packed in, just it's not working. So. All right. Hopefully, it won't, it won't bother me. Uh, so, <clears throat> how are you keeping your head? Well, right, then. Yeah, oh, God. Uh, Paul just... Largan, the Greenway Raiders, with us as well. Good evening. How are you doing, Paul? Okay. Oh, so back to college today, so I'm fucking knackered to be honest. How many years? Have you, how many years have we left to go? This is uh, could probably another two. Um, this is my third year, so two years left to um, to complete my degree, basically. I was just going to say, join college when you're sixteen. Uh, Aye. <laughs> then you'll be addressing me as Doctor Larkin. Hello. Oh, well. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Oh, hey! Uh, I asked me on the, asked me on the phone, but I'm having the idea what's wrong with the PC. I can hear you. It's perfect. Somebody must have messed with your settings, would they? Nah, uh, past don't know. You can probably do this on your iPad, anyway, couldn't you? I'm on the phone. I don't know, all right, no problem. Can you hear clear as a bell. Well, that way you can go and relax in your bed or something instead of bothering your family now in the sitting room. Yeah. Aye. How you keeping? That was a negative, Joe. <laughs> How you keeping? <laughs> Kidding me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm kind of a bit hectic coming on today because I was running late because I was up, up to doing stuff. So I haven't really catched up mu- much news today. So I guess we'll just start with uh, where do we start? Maribor last week. Uh, Aye. Right. Start with Maribor. Uh, last week, I'm trying to cast my mind back. I don't think things move in football. One-one uh, draw. Should have been a win, uh, but for the uh, the incredible uh, goal line clearance by Stefan Johansson, uh, could, have, could, have, could have been a win. And also his, his great chance, uh, I thought he had a great game. Um, in terms of Maribor, I mean, in terms of like watching them and seeing how good they were and what we're looking at tomorrow night, uh, I thought they were a busy enough team, but I didn't really see an awful lot that made me worry that much. You know what I mean? And... Uh, um, I don't really know how, how you guys took it. I thought it was a, I thought it was a de- decent game. Um, I didn't think we were in any real actual danger. I thought the, the goal was completely Lustig's fault because he fell asleep. Um, but apart from that, it was fairly, uh, it was fairly positive about it. You know, coming away from it, I felt felt fairly good about it. So I'll throw it over to throw it over to Paul. Paul, you there? Um, I mean, what, what did you get out of it? Yeah, I mean, I thought it was. Uh, I thought we got a tactic spot on and. Um, I also think Maribor completely underestimated us. Uh, I really do, because I think that um, from them scouting us in the previous games against Legia, I think they probably looked at it and thought, oh, there's no much threat here, you know, we'll just kind of sit off them, pay, clear their mistakes and, and take them apart. And what that actually meant was there were players were able to control the game for long periods and, uh, you know, essentially should have won the game. But, you know... For that reason, I'm not exactly like thinking. Oh well, it's no problem at all in the, in the second leg because obviously it's Celtic. And um, I saw a lot of comparisons with the game last Wednesday when we, when we drew in Moscow one one back in 2007, and we all know what happened in the second leg of that game. So 
But oh, I was really pleased. I mean, there was clearly a lot of improvement from Warsaw. I thought certain players really stepped up. Um, you know, Kyle again had a decent game, and uh, yeah, I mean, I was really pleased, Joe. Mm. Um, yeah, it was. It was quite. A, it was. I know, like the positives from like uh, Johnson and Dundee United were, were were great for us, but there's also that worry in the back of your head going to Champions League, especially after the Legion game. Just going like we might be just going too far. But I mean, I think in terms of progress, I think Marty, Marty Dial is seeing what he wants to see, and uh, I think he's still obviously in a. Not, I wouldn't even say honeymoon period because I don't think he's even taken that. I think he's really just getting in and uh, really figuring out what, what he's got to work with and where he needs to strengthen things. And I think he's willing to take, as we said at the weekend, take the risks that uh, expose the weaknesses in his squad and therefore he suppose he can plug those if, if he has the chance. Um, so, I mean, my sort of optimism jumped after the Maribor game. I was like, oh, well, we, could, we, could, we, could, we could be back on the... You know, Terra Firma here doing really well. But then again, you come back down with a crash at the weekend against Inverness. But uh I mean overall, in terms I'm I'm quite I'm quite uh optimistic, especially ahead of tomorrow. I think it's gonna be a really tough game. I think it'd be quite a close game. But I think if we score early and the crowd's big and the crowd's good, I don't think there'd be any stopping us. Uh Harper, what about you? I I agree with Paul. I think uh, he did get the the, the tactics spot on. Um I said when I seen the lineup, I wasn't that uh, I wasn't that surprised. Commons didn't start. I think uh, there was a certain um, conservativeness of the lineup in the fact that he wanted to beef up the midfield a wee bit. He went with Stokes up front in his own, uh, supported by Burgett. and I think there was there was definitely a, well, a, a fear is the right word, but I think it was definitely making sure. There isn't going to be another repeat of what happened in Vega, that's for sure. Um, so I think the lineup kind of reflected that. But I have to say, I mean, I didn't think Maribor were, were, were much of anything at all, to be honest. Uh, I've never seen a team... I mean, they were playing the... They must have learned how to play that when they played the Huns three years ago because it was a lot of that show, wasn't it? Uh, they just wanted to, to kiss the ball and just sit off us and just leave us with the ball. And sometimes I was getting a wee bit annoyed because it's like they're the home team and it's up to them to to force force the game, if you like, to come at us. And sometimes our, our, our back, well, the back three, uh, essentially, we had the ball and we were passing it along the line and they weren't pressing us. And then eventually it got to the point where Charlie Mulgrew would say, all right, give me the ball, and then he'd pat along diagonal with it. Nine times out of ten, that we wouldn't have won the header or whatever. It worked for a shine. I'm like, it was annoying me in the fact. Just keep the ball. We we didn't have to be the ones that eventually say let's let's start things moving here. So I was disappointed in that sense that Maribor didn't really try and make a game at all. I think it wasn't until the last twenty minutes. I think they thought like well, let's have a go now. So I, I didn't really see any fear in that team. I, I I think we could beat them quite comfortably in the morning night. Obviously. We're still a work in progress. Um, I thought I wouldn't take anything for such uh, Saturday's game as a reflection on how tomorrow night will be and the changes that were made and stuff like that. Um, I thought we were very, very comfortable against Maribor, um, and there was there was definitely though, a, a, as I said, a conservative sort of. Uh, tactic. Like even at the end, I seen a lot of Celtic fans complaining that we never flung the ball in the box for a corner when it was like a minute in the injury time. And I was glad they never. I, I was quite happy to see them just take it shot because I mean, how many times have we had that sort of heartbreak in the last minute? Uh, I think we're more than happy to take a draw to, with them to Celtic Park. To be honest, like most, I don't think there was any any need for that flinging the ball in the box at the end to try and get a winner. So I was quite happy. It wasn't a, uh, an amazing performance, but it was a uh, it was a good. Mm-hmm. Like I gotta say, uh, I mean, not setting the word. McGregor- uh, getting in there. Sniffing out a goal, do you know what I mean? It was a great ball to Johansson over the top to Burgett, uh, and then the, the ball brain. That's that's where you want a guy like that to be in there. I think it was meant to 
player like that coming through at Celtic and supremely confident as well, you know. But he also seems to have that kind of, I mean, obviously I don't know anything about the boy, but he seems to have his feet in the ground kind of thing, if you know what I mean. He doesn't look like uh, kind of big-time Charlie. Uh, maybe that's a wee bit of reference to Tony Watt, I don't know, but I think there's a guy who's, you can give him his chance, and he's going to take it, unlike a lot of them who came in the Saturday. Do you think Chris Cameron's got a shot? Uh, I don't know if it's a, well, not a lot of fans were shocked, I suppose, but I don't know, you just, it's a team game and the, the manager's got to pick the team that he thinks is best on the night, and I think you've got to, to be honest, they've got a pretty spot on, like, haven't they? Yeah, I thought the so, blame, so. I just get the feeling that a guy like Chris Commons with a, kind of the pedigree that he's gained from being at Celtic might be a bit, his nose might be yeah, a joint. I think he's old enough and mature enough to understand that at this level that these things happen. Yeah. I wouldn't read. I wouldn't read too much into that man. Right, so Jason, what are you still there? Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you. <sighs> so in terms of like last week, I mean, did you have any anybody that stood out for you or any opinions that you thought like either made you feel good or made you feel bad? Uh, I really like Kai Al was brilliant. Kai Al for me was man of the match. I thought it was excellent. I thought you were. Right? It was really good. But Kai Al was. Uh, it's been a. I rejuvenated Kai Al since Dyla came in, so happy days and long may continue, you know. But um, I thought he got the team spot on and no credit to him. And I think even at the end, in the second half, when he took off Berger and brought on Ambrose, I thought that was the correct move as well, you know, just to shore it up. But I kind of agree with what Harper says. I thought that team was rubbish. I, I, they didn't show anything.